And I want to start with the NFL because obviously we're getting close to the start of the season. It's hard to believe that the offseason is almost done in a month. In the first week of September, the NFL is back. It's a great feeling. Fall is always one of the best times of the year, generating buzz. We're getting excited. And there's been a lot of buzz around the Arizona Cardinals throughout this entire offseason with Kyler Murray. Would he stay? Was he was he pissed off with the Cardinals organization? Well, we've cleared it up. He got his new contract extension, five years, $230 million, $160 million in guarantees. He signed through the 2028 season. This happened over uh, the end of last week on Friday. So that's already put to bed. He's with the Cardinals. He got the deal. That's what he was seeking. He has, he has said all the right things. He has said all the right things since he signed this contract, that he's always wanted to be here the entire time that there's no place he'd rather be. So from a PR standpoint, he's doing what he needs to do for damage control. He and his agent are trying to bounce back after what was a bit of a turbulent offseason, to say the least. We obviously know that, that Kyler is a little bit of a diva. He acted a bit petulantly and immaturely over the offseason, scrubbing his social media accounts of anything related to the Arizona Cardinals in an attempt to try to stranglehold the Cardinals and force their hand into signing him and getting a deal done quickly. Obviously, he still had two years remaining on his rookie contract, but because of his style of play, because of the number of hits that he's taken, he wanted to lock up his long-term security. And he knew and he knows that his style of play isn't conducive to staying healthy beyond perhaps another contract and he wants to sign up that long-term security so from that perspective i completely understood his decision to pursue a new contract to be aggressive with it but when he when he had his agent come out for him and release that statement a couple months ago basically reaffirming kyler's commitment to the organization but also listing several demands in order for him to return it further shined a bigger light on Kyler Murray and his relationship with the Cardinals and perhaps his displeasure with the organization. So now that that's taken care of, because again, Murray is a smaller guy. He's a little bit more fragile, prone to injury. He's always been healthy throughout the season. He's been in the NFL three years. He's managed to stay around throughout the entire season. He played all 16 games his first two years. He played 14 of 17 last year. The problem's been he always gets banged up and he gets nicked up. And his team falters down the stretch. We've seen it in three consecutive years, especially last year. They lost to the Rams in the wild card game, but they started out the year 7-0. and They were 10-2 and at one point, and they finished the last five games going 1-4. and So the question is, what should the expectations be, not only of Kyler, but also the Arizona Cardinals as a team? And so for me, what this contract indicates not only is the commitment that the Cardinals have made to Kyler Murray, but from Kyler Murray's end, this is a guy who has to set a goal for himself to stay healthy. This is a guy who now needs to prove that he can last throughout an entire season and not just technically last, meaning that his name is written into the QB one position, but that he can actually be healthy and that he can perform throughout the entire season. Because again, the Cardinals have always jumped out to quick starts under his leadership, but then have kind of tumbled down the stretch. So for him, this is a major opportunity, a major season for him to prove to the Cardinals that he can stay healthy throughout the duration of the season. That's the first big goal. I think that he is still someone who is going to continue to rack up Pro Bowl selections. This is a guy who was the number one overall pick and the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year in 2019. He's received back-to-back. -back, he's made back-to-back -back Pro Bowl selections. I think that all those accolades are going to continue to come his way. I think he's someone who is going to be a perennial Pro Bowl selector, or selection, rather. But... The question is, and I again, I really actually like Kyler Murray as a player. I think he is unique in the sense that he's got the quickest feet and the quickest acceleration that I've ever seen. I don't think, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think that anyone has the type of explosive burst 
right out of the gates, the zero to 60 Ferrari engine that he has. Lamar Jackson can be faster in the open field, but as far as going from zero to 60, I think Kyler's got the quickest feet in the NFL. So for Kyler, that's the individual expectation is that he's going to stay mature. He's going to lead the Arizona Cardinals consistently to the postseason. And that's the expectation that the Cardinals should have for themselves as an organization signing this new deal. Obviously, they understand that you can't accomplish anything in the NFL without a very, very good quarterback. They recognize that they've got one of a handful of excellent quarterbacks in their building. And they wanted to lock him up. But what that means is that this should be a perennial playoff team. This should be a perennial wild card team at the bare minimum. And when you look at the NFC, you look at the future of the NFC during the length of this contract and which teams are still going to be viable during that time. Right now, it's very open in the NFC. And those expectations should be right there. There should be a lot of pressure heaped onto the Cardinals to perform because the Bucs are going to likely not do much after Brady retires. Same thing with the Green Bay Packers. After after that, you've got the Rams that are going to stay in contention. Dallas and the Eagles are still going to be relevant. But that's about it. The 49ers, of course, under Shanahan, are always going to be tough, and they'll probably build themselves back up and stay competitive. But outside of that, it's for the Cardinals to compete perhaps with the Rams at the top for that for that conference. The Saints will be coming. They're going to be humming a little bit more next year. But there really aren't many obstacles in their way that should derail this team in the Cardinals from doing something special. Now, I think that the future for them is competing for an NFC championship. I think they can do that. I think they can reach the Super Bowl. I don't, I don't necessarily envision them winning a Super Bowl, but I could see them competing for one and being in that Final Four. But regardless of whether or not they can win the Super Bowl, I think they can make an appearance there over the next five years. So that should be the standard. That should be the expectation for this team now that Kyler has signed this new deal. Because I also think that there are just so many really talented young quarterbacks in the AFC, and those teams are coming. I think they might be too much for the Cardinals as currently constructed for a team like Arizona to overtake a Bills or a Chiefs or a Broncos, really that AFC West, the Raiders, amongst other teams. So that's that's the expectation right now for the Arizona Cardinals. I'm glad that they got a deal done. I actually do like Kyler Murray. It was unpleasant to have to chronicle how we got here and their relationship over the last several months, but we're here, and congrats to him. That's a major, major contract for him to sign up, to, to sign to. I think it was about $100 million perhaps, in signing bonus. So he's taken care of. The Cardinals are taken care of for the future. And we'll see what Arizona is able to do over the next five to seven years.